Astrology is scientific way part two. Astrology is an investigation into the possibility that whatever is happening anywhere in the universe also affects man because we are all one organic harmony. Astrology is not merely the study of the stars, although it includes that, and apparently it appears to be so. We will talk about this. Besides the study of the stars, there are other separate dimensions through which astrologist tries to prove man's future by which it can get hold of the future. In order to become aware of the future, it is necessary to become aware of the past. In order to be aware of the past, it is necessary to read the inscriptions traced in your body and on your mind. There are inscriptions on your body and there are inscriptions on your mind. This we have to understand how the inscriptions are on the body and how they are on the mind. From the time astrology became obsessed with these bodily inscriptions, it could no longer go very deep because these bodily inscriptions are very superficial. If your mind undergoes a change, then the lines on your palm will immediately change. I will narrate an incident which relates to my grandfather and my mother. According to astrology, there has to be marriage line in your hand, the inscription at the bodily level. So it happened when my mother became 16 years of age. As normally it happens, we start looking, arranging to get the suitable match for the girl. So my grandmother told the Sufi that your daughter is 16 years of age, start looking for her match. So she insisted on him to look at her palm. When he looked at it, he became quiet. He didn't say anything. It happened many years after she got married and after she got married in February 1949 and in March month it was arranged to go to a hill station for summer vacations. So my father was supposed to come from his work and then take the train to go to that station, that place. Whereas my mother was at her father's place, so all of them, the entire group, went from there. There my father had an accident. She was riding the bicycle. The front wheel of the bicycle came out and he felt as if someone held on to his hand and pulled him out and stand. So Sufi said to my nanny, look, taking the nickname of my father that he got into an accident but everything is okay. So while my father was going up the hill, the group was coming down so my grandmother asked him a question, how was everything, what happened to your accident? Then he asked how did, how did she know? He said your father had told me about that. So an astrologer came, an astrologer came and he looked at the hand, Hindus have certain symbols of marriage that are known as marriage symbols. Number one, toe ring, number two, the red sindur or vermilion in the forehead, the path between the hair on the forehead and a big round tikka that is known as bindi. So the man looked at her hand and looked at her toe and head and he was confused. He was so confused, he asked the people there, is this girl married? 
so everybody said she has the symbols of marriage and definitely she is married then he was confused so to ease up his situation the sufi gave him his hand he said look at my hand and when he looked at his hand he left his hand and held on to his feet he said i was wondering what is the force that has changed the inscriptions of lines on her body the inscriptions on the line of the body means the on the hand and forehead and on the feet these keep on forming and changing from time to time according to your own awareness as the awareness changes these lines change if i keep on giving you for two weeks a, a suggestion that in two weeks time you will die your lifeline will become broken and the astrologer said i was surprised what is the force that has made the marriage line in her hand this girl was not supposed to get married this is how the connection between the mental lines and the physical lines are if your awareness changes or you are within the energy field of a person who has the capability to change these everything all the inscriptions in your book as the bodily symbols will change if your mind undergoes a change the lines on your palm will immediately change if under hypnosis you are assured that after 15 days your life will come to an end and if every day for 15 days you are made unconscious and assured in your unconsciousness unconscious state that you will die after 15 days whether you actually die or not your lifeline will be broken at proportional length of 15 days a gap will have appeared on your lifeline and body will accept the notion that death is on the way this is the connection because body and the mind are not separate instead they are body mind realm the lines traced on the body are a very superficial phenomenon so those who look at the the lines on the palm or on the forehead they are looking at the superficial aspect normally a well known astrologer will connect all the parts he will look at the lines on the palm lines on the forehead he will connect to your numerology and the birth chart and the other charts that are part of the astrology the in the same way the centers that exist deep within the body which yoga calls as chakra or psycho spiritual centers or lataya that sufi call these are the accumulated form of the memory that you have lived one who knows can by placing his hand on a particular chakra discovers how active it is by touching your seven chakras it can be known whether you have ever experienced them or not normally it happens we experience the first and the second chakra first is the muladhara the first and the two they comprise the sex centers the energy is stored in the earth center and from there it moves and merges to the water center and when this is also known as physical chakras that and when you look at the sex sex has three levels the physical level the mental level and the level higher than that when first time you are attracted to someone your connectivity is only that of the physical so the attraction happens at the physical level and it throughout the life throughout the marriage life within the expiry date of the marriage it remains at that plane level if the hands are placed then 
it can be known if all the seven chakras are alive and if they are that means there is no possibility of another life this life will be the final and the nirvana or the salvation will happen liberation will happen if someone came to mahabir he made it his concern to discover how many chakras were active in that person just by different methods depending on the situation the master connects that is why when we are taking the bath according to the sufi tradition the master takes your hand in your hand in case of female it was because of certain restrictions the piece of white cloth was used as a connection one end of the cloth the female participant holds the other side the shape holds and thus the process of initiation or bath takes place so through that he connects to the psycho centers and knows where the work has to be done and this master does not need to explain but i am explaining because it is important that at all the levels the growth has to take place and this particular talk is explained in relation to one of the participants who is doing his dissertation or thesis on these topics so these aspects are needed in more detail if more details are needed you can give me a call and i will explain in relation to a particular question that will make the research more profound astrology is an attempt prove the future by many many paths not one among these and the most common use path is the study of how planets and stars influence man for this more scientific evidence is becoming available every day this much has been decided life is affected and cannot avoid being affected by these influences only the second part remains difficult to determine whether each person is also affected by an individual it worries scientists a little whether each person is affected individually whether the 3 or 4 million people on this planet are each affected as individuals but they must realize that it is so but why are they so troubled nature gives each person a thumb which is uniquely his which is individual and unrepeatable that's why in court evidences we take the thumb impression as well when you go for the american visa your finger impressions are taken the left and the right thumb impression is taken individually and the remainder of the four fingers of the two hands they are impressions or test is done separately thumb is unique the impression on this is unique and nobody has a similar and this is not repeated nature keeps such a subtle account that it gives each person a thumb which is uniquely his and a thumb imprint which can never belong to anyone else rather now no in future several billions of the people have lived on the earth several billion people may live on the earth in future but my thumb imprint will not be repeated you may be surprised to learn that even in the case of twins born out of one egg their thumb imprints will differ from one another this is why 
Sometimes you may wonder why these American, the immigration people, the homeland security have taken separately the thumb impression and the remainder four fingers are their impressions are taken together. So whenever any non-immigrant visitor goes, his eyes are looked into and the left and the right thumb, first the left thumb, then the right thumb, then the four fingers of the two hands are checked. Science, if nature can bestow so much individuality on each person with regard to a worthless thing like a thumb, a thing which is of no special value and which seems to fulfill no special purpose. If nature can even give a thumb a uniqueness, then can't it give each man a unique life and unique soul, unique mind? There seems to be no reason why it is. it should not. But science moves in a slow motion and it is good. For science, slow motion is good until a fact that has been completely proved, it is not good to move forward even an inch and science does that. But prophets, the masters, take a leap. They can declare what will happen in thousands or even hundreds of thousand years from now. It was Ankan ki Razi Allah in 15 24 declared, mentioned it to his Khalifa Hadrat Bakhtubullah Razi and sending to you to India in preparation for the second millennium. There will be an Ahmad. It was a prediction long before. There will be an Ahmad. Who will be? The, that will be the 17th Ahmad. And that will be the beginning of new millennium. And that was in reference to Hazrat Mujaddid Alif Sani, Sheikh Ahmad Faruqi, Mujaddid Alif Sani, Razi Allah Ta'ala, the, whose Mazar-e Mubarak is in Rosa Sharif Sarin, that is in Chandigarh. It was nearly close to 100 years before the prediction was made about Lala Ji Razi Allah Ta'ala no, by Sheikh Abul Hasan Nasirabadi that two people from Hindu religion will come and they will be the true inheritor of this spiritual wealth. Probably Hazrat Amkan Ki Razi Allah Ta'ala no, when he sent Hazrat Baki Willa Razi Allah Ta'ala to India it was these two things in mind. First for the beginning of this second millennium in this Islamic Sunni calendar and second the merger of the two cultures the Hindu culture, the Vedantic culture and the Islamic culture but the fundamentalists disagree with the way of the masters. Science moves forward inch by inch but the masters can predict no even hundred years before. It seems only facts, facts that can be experimented upon is the way of science. Dreaming is of no use to science, but prophets can and the masters can discover truth even what happens in the dream. For them, even the future is simply the expanded present because existence works non-stop 24 hours a day and every single state of yours conscious unconscious and various various stages of consciousness are used as a technique to work with you sometimes it happens that i have to send a message so let there be how much connection is there between you two i am not physically available to you, how can you connect? Then you use 
the modern day device of the cell phone and you see that you can connect to that person but if that person is not available you cannot connect in the same way if your doors are open or your phone is switched off or your consciousness is switched off then the message remains as as true waiting when you open your turn on your phone you will receive the message so in the same way when you are not available the message is stored into your unconscious like escrow or the message that is sent on your the message which is the way the modern the smartphones work and at your convenience you receive it so in dreams and so when you receive a message or you get a feeling it is coming from the existence astrology is basically in, is an investigation of future and science is basically the investigation of the past science is the investigation of the cause of all that exists today and astrology is the investigation of the effects of all that exists today between the two there is a wide gap but everyday science experiences new things and the theories which seemed impossible once have begun to seem possible as i have said earlier science has only recently accepted that every man is born with a built-in individuality for a long time it has been reluctant to accept the validity of this idea but astrology has long been saying this just try to understand for instance take a mango seed when you saw the mango seed contained within it there must be some sort of built-in program there must be a blueprint if there was no the seed will be helpless it neither takes the advice from the specialist nor does it study at the university how can a mango tree develop out of the seed still it produces the mango produces the mango tree leaves it bears mango fruits concealed in this stone like seed there must be a complete program without such a program how could the seed be or progress everything must be present to be whatever the tree will be must somehow be concealed within the seed it is not visible to us we can smash it and dissect it and it will not be visible it must be there somehow otherwise a neem tree might possibly emerge out of the sea mango sea but it seems there is never a mistake in the scheme of the existence only a mango tree will emerge everything is repeatedly repeated correctly is stored in this tiny seed is all the information the blueprint which relates to what the seed must do how it must sprout because each seed sprouts in a different way mango seeds sprouts in a different way a guava and and other vegetables and fruits each one of them sprout in a different way what type of leaf and how many branches to produce how big a tree is to become how long it will grow how tall it will grow all this must be hidden deep within the seed how many mangoes how sweet whether they will ripe or not all this must be concealed hidden in the seed if all this is concealed just within a tiny mango seed 
then when you come into your mother's womb, will there be nothing latent in your seed? The scientists agree that even at this stage, the color of your eyes must lie concealed. That the color of your hair must be, must lie concealed. Your height, your body, must everything in the blueprint form exist. That the possibility of health and ill health must be hidden. And that even your IQ must be hidden there. Because without all this, how would you do that? And by what means? What criteria? You must have a program that is built in in advance. How will certain bones join together to form as hand and others as feet? One part will begin to see, another part will begin to hear. How can all this happen? Scientists used to say that it was just a coincidence, but word coincidence seems to be very unscientific. Coincidence means a chance. By chance a foot must begin to see and a hand to hear, but that does not happen. And there does not seem to be much coincidence. Everything seems to be in order rearranged in a particular. Astrology says a more scientific thing. It says that everything is available within the seed. Astrology says that if we study the seed, we can discover the language of the seed. And if we can decode this language, we can ask the seed what is your intention. Then we will be able to draw the complete blueprint of the human being as well. Science has already begun to draw up such blueprints for plants. Up to now, we have considered astrology to be superstition, a matter of blind faith. But if science draw, draws up such blueprints, it will in fact become astrology. And certainly, science has already begun to draw such blueprints. Astrology declares that if by divine grace we can come to know the whole, then the future as such will not exist. But because we do not know whole, we know only a small fragment. What we must know becomes the future. We are obliged to say perhaps it will be like this. Because much is unknown to us and remains unknown as well. If the whole were known, then we could say it will be like this. And it would be exactly so. If everything is latent within the human seed, then it is only a matter of studying the seed. When I am talking about today, must be in some form of a, existed in my seat as a potentiality. Otherwise, how could I talk about all this? If someday it becomes possible to observe a human seat, then after observing my seat, a blueprint could be drawn indicating that I will say in this life, what I will become, what I will not, what I will make of myself, what I will not, what will happen. All these could be forecast. It will not be surprising when, maybe tomorrow, if not today, we have the capacity to peek into the human seed. The first step has already begun in this direction. Birth charts and horoscopes are, the, are only proving into these matters. For thousands of years, when a child is born, we have tried to find out what will he become. If we could get some idea 
then perhaps we could make some arrangements and perhaps we could increase the child's opportunities that are available to him. Then whatsoever is to happen, we could become accepting it. I have heard towards the end of his life, Mullah Nasruddin declared that he had always been miserable, but that suddenly one day he had become happy. The entire population of the village was stuck with wonder that a man who had always been depressed, who has always been the dark side of the thing, there are people who, whatsoever you talk to them, they will always bring out the darker side of the line, darker side of that particular thing that you mentioned to him. Should suddenly have become cheerful. He was a man who had always been pessimist, who has always looked for thorns. Once there was an excellent crop in Nasruddin's garden. There were so many apples that trees were overloaded. One man in the neighborhood had inquired whether Nasruddin could now have any complaint. He said, this time the crop is such that it will rain gold. What would you, what do you think, Nasruddin? The great, in great song, Nasruddin said, everything is okay, but where will I get rotten apple to feed animals? In everything he looks his. Such a man always remains miserable. And you look into what is your situation? Where will I get the rotten apple to feed the animals? All the apples were good, none were rotten, and this was his difficulty. Suddenly one man, one day this man becomes happy. So the people of the village were curious. They ask, you are happy, Mullah? What is the secret? Mullah said, I have learned to cooperate with the inevitable. After many years of struggling, I have been realizing something. Now I have decided that what must be, must be. Now I cooperate with the inevitable. So now there is no reason to be miserable. And as a result, I am happy. Astrology investigates many things. It lends a cooperative hand to whatsoever is inevitable. It does not unnecessarily struggle against whatsoever is to be. It does not demand or reach out towards whatever is not to be. Astrology was a means of making man religious, of bringing him to suchness, of bringing him to an ultimate acceptance. This will be astrology, the way towards religiousness will be the next topic that I will take in this line. It has many dimensions, it has many aspects. We will gradually discuss each dimension, but today just this much, that the universe is a living body, an organic unity, it, in it nothing is isolated, all is connected. Whatsoever is far away is connected to that which is near, nothing is separate. We are not aliens nor as a stranger's joint. We are bound to each other by a causeless force. So no one should remain in a fallacy that is isolated, island, separate, aloof. Each one is connected to the whole. Each one is all the time affecting the other and being affected by the other. That's why it is a greater responsibility on those who are awakened that never let a depressing thought come to their mind. Just as if the mother or this one member in the house is depressed, it affects all the members in the family, this we can see. So too, we are all part of one 
cosmic harmony. So no one should remain in a fallacy that he is an isolated island, separate, aloof. Each one is connected to the whole and each one is all the time affecting the other and is being affected by the other. Even when you pass by a stone lying on the road, it is throwing its vibration in your direction. The flowers too are throwing the, out their vibrations in the form of fragrance and beauty. And you are not just passing by it. You are also throwing out your vibrations, whether it is negative or positive. Whatsoever it is, you are continuously emitting vibrations. I said, we are all affected by the moon and the stars. Another idea that astrology has is that moon and the stars are affected by us because influence comes from both directions. Whenever a man like Buddha is born on earth, the moon may not realize that it is because of him that the storms are not arising on the surface of the moon. That because of Buddha, the storms have subsided, the moon is affected and the sun is also moved. When the spots occur on the surface of the sun, the storms arise, the disease is spread across the earth. When a person like Buddha is born on the earth, a current of peace flows. The pillar of consciousness grows stronger and deep beauty of meditation moves over the earth, which also makes it difficult for the storms to arise on the sun because everything is joined together. At a time when Buddha Mahabir walked on the earth, there was Pythagoras, there was Lao Tse, and many other masters walked through the planet Earth. And the impact of that was totally different. Now, the masters are there, but along with that, there are other negative forces with misinterpreting the, the basic tenets of the religion and continuing to do things what unconsciously they consider to be right. And the outcome is many kind of ailments, disasters, and things like that happen. A tiny blade of grass has an impact on the sun, and sun has its impact on the blade of grass. The blade of grass is not so tiny that sun can say, I do not care about you, nor is the sun so big that it can say, what can this blade of grass do to me? Life is interconnected. Here, nothing is big nor small. Everything is one single organic unity. Life is whole. You will only understand astrology if you can perceive this wholeness. Otherwise, you will not. You will misunderstand it. This is the aspect which, has I, which I have spoken today. Tomorrow, we will slowly move to discuss the other dimensions, astrology as a door to religiousness. And if it can help us to become more and more religious, more and more harmonious, more and more fulfilled within, the purpose of astrology to me is fulfilled.